What's up guys, this is my UFC 213 prediction video. For this prediction video, I'm just gonna go through the main card. So starting with Anthony Pettis versus Jim Miller. This is an interesting fight because Anthony Pettis is taking a step down in competition now and Jim Miller is getting a little bit older in, this, in the fight game, especially due to wars and the amount of damage he's taken. In Anthony Pettis, you got a Taekwondo fighter, very good submission ability, although his takedown defense has been suspect, right? Um, that's been his biggest weakness. And that could be a lot of problems against a guy like Jim Miller who's going to go for that takedown. Very scrappy fighter, very good submissions, uh, BJJ fighter as well. But in this fight, I'm going to go with Anthony Pettis. I'm going to go by a first or second round knockout. I think the speed and the athleticism and just the pure striking technique, Anthony Pettis, is going to be too much for Miller. I can see Pettis landing a head kick. I can see him setting him up for it as Miller is trying to close the distance. And then we go to Fabricio Verdun versus Alistair Overeem. This is the third fight between these two. One in Pride, one in Strike Force, and now in the UFC. So you have Fabricio Verdun who is rising and he's getting better, which is pretty interesting because he's an older fighter, 38, 39 years old. Amazing jiu-jitsu fighter, probably the best jiu-jitsu fighter in heavyweight history. Submitted three of the greatest heavyweights of all time, Fedor, Cain Velasquez, and Noguera. He was the heavyweight champion. His striking has been looking really good. He has really good leg kicks. His punch is a little bit wild at times, especially when you see in the Stipe fight. He doesn't have the knockout power that Overeem has, but his kicks are very devastating and his knees are as well. But if it goes on the ground, Overeem could be in big trouble. And then you have Alistair Overeem, who is more of a kickboxer, although he has underrated submissions as well. I don't think he's going to submit Verdum. I don't think he wants to go on the ground with Verdum, but Overeem is much more technical much quicker and has much more power on the feet than Verdum does. And he's a little bit bigger too. And he has really good footwork as well. So it's going to be really hard for Verdum to get it to the ground. The only guy that really got over him on the ground that I can remember is Stipe Miocic, but that was off one of his leg kicks. And it wasn't just like Stipe shot in and took him down at will. So Verdum is going to have a very hard time to get in the fight to the ground. And if he can't, this could be a very long night for him. But in this fight, I'm going to go with Alistair over him. And I'm going to go by a first or second round knockout. I don't think Verdum is going to get him to the ground. And I think he's going to be in huge trouble if he can't. The clinch is going to be devastating for him. The distance is going to be a huge problem for Verdum. So I see a first or second round knockout. Most likely due to a knee. I don't know why I see a knee landing in this fight. Let me go to the co-main event. Yoel Romero versus Robert Whittaker. This is one of the fights I'm most excited for this year. This might be even the fight of the night. You have one in Yoel Romero who's an excellent wrestler. Very powerful, probably the most athletic guy I've ever seen in the UFC. 40 years old, which is crazy. Knockout power, probably the strongest guy in the division. One of the fastest guys in the division. He's very elusive, very free out there. He lulls you with his movement, explodes on you out of nowhere. But he likes to take his time, though, a little bit. A lot of his finishes are late, and he's fighting Robert Whitaker, who's more of a striker, karate-based, has excellent hands, very good punching ability. His footwork is also really excellent. He likes to keep his hands really low, though. It could be a problem against a guy like Yoel Romero, because Romero, although he is really good at wrestling, he's really good at coming up with shots, especially the flying knee. He has two wins by that, one earlier in his UFC career and one against Chris Weidman. But I believe in the exchanges on the feet, especially with the hands, Whitaker is a bit better than Romero. I think he's more slick. I think he's more technical. Technical and his slipping ability is much better. It's so close. I, I really don't know who is going to win. If I have to pick, I'm going to go with Yoel Romero. I think he's going to be a little bit too powerful. I think his explosive ability is going to be a little bit too much. And I think he's going to catch Whitaker unexpected. And it might be a bit early. I think he's going to catch him in the second round. And if he takes Whitaker to the ground, it could be huge problems for Whitaker. Because Romero is not someone you could just shake off. And then we go to the main event. Amanda Nunes versus Valentina Shevchenko. I am almost 50-50 in this fight. I've been going back and forth. In the beginning, I was thinking Nunes might win. And then I switched to Shevchenko. And now I, I really don't know. But these two are the best fighters in this division's history. The most technical. The most skilled. The most well-rounded. There has never been a fighter in the 135-pound division as good as these two are. You can even say in women's MMA, period. These two are good everywhere. Takedowns are really good at. Takedown defense with their punches, with their kicks, with their knees, with their footwork, with their submissions. Submission defense. I mean, these two are excellent at everything. Although one is a little bit more explosive and the other is a little bit more balanced between explosiveness and cardio and holding up the stamina. So you have Amanda Nunes, who's a very explosive fighter. The hardest puncher in the 135 pound division. Probably the hardest puncher other than Chris Cyborg. Very fast. Long arms. Uses every bit of her reach. 
very athletic, really excellent footwork, using in and out movement, side to side, lateral movement. Her takedown ability, especially in the clinch, is really powerful. As you've seen in the first fight, Shevchenko had a really hard time fighting Nunez in the clinch early on. So on the ground, especially early on, Nunez has a big advantage. You can say in the first two rounds, Amanda Nunez is the better fighter, of course, right? Because of her explosiveness and her skill and technique. But after that, Shevchenko is the stronger and better fighter. And then you have Shevchenko, who is obviously a world-class striker, the most credentialed fighter in women's MMA, given all of her striking accolades, her judo accolades, and so many more. She is extremely quick, a little bit small for the division, her optimal weight is 125 but she does really well against bigger fighters relying a lot on her speed and her counter ability she's pretty strong too especially in the clinch and the thing about Shevchenko coming into this fight is she is evolving greatly if you look at her Pena fight she submitted Pena with an arm bar I mean that is very impressive that was the least likely way for Shevchenko to win in most people's eyes it just shows that she's evolving greatly after every fight so she could be a lot better than the Pena fight coming into this fight Same thing with Nunez. This fight is going to be very interesting. It's hard for me to see this fight go to the decision. And it's such a hard fight to call. I'm almost even on this fight. But if I'm going to have to pick a winner and stick to it, I have a feeling, my gut feeling says Amanda Nunez is going to take it. I have no idea why, but I have a feeling she's going to win the fight. But my head says that Shevchenko should win this fight. It's a tough fight to call, especially that it's a five-round fight. Looking at the first fight, Amanda Nunes was gassing out after the second round. That could play a factor here, but I guarantee Nunes has been working on her cardio, and I guarantee she's going to be strong for a good three rounds. But if I'm going to have to pick, I'm going to go with Amanda Nunes. I'm going to go with Amanda Nunes, and I'm going to go by a second or third round submission. I think she's going to do very well on the feet with Shevchenko. I think she's going to catch her this time, hurt her, not finish her with strikes, but I think she's going to hurt her take her down, and then get her back and get her in the rear naked choke. That's my prediction, guys. Uh, That's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe. As I said in the previous video, in my previous uh, prediction video, the Floyd Mayweather Conor McGregor pre-fight breakdown is going to come up soon. Uh, There's some things that have delayed it. It took a bit more work than my usual videos, but I promise I'm going to get that out latest, latest early next week. And make sure to comment below what your guys' predictions are and also what fight in the whole weekend are you looking forward to the most. I'm curious to see what you guys think. And also make sure to watch the fights the friday card looks a lot of fun and the saturday card is just an amazing card from top to bottom one of the best cards of the year probably right behind 211 and 214 but i think it competes with 211 as far as the names and the exciting matchups so make sure to watch the fights guys and again thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video